Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our website aws-dozo.com. Today I'm going to talk about how you can use custom classifier in AWS Glue to catalog your data. I have been working with a customer recently and there they struggle a lot uh, to do correct classification or correct cataloging uh, of their data and there we use custom classifier uh, a lot and I thought why don't I uh, share some of the learning from uh, their side. So uh, our learning was very much textbook learning but I think it's worth uh, sharing with you. So moving on just to uh, understand uh, what how classifiers are. So what happens is that when you're trying to catalog your data in, in uh, AWS uh, data lake uh, using Glue Crawler, your source data will be uh, in places like some kind of uh, JDBC data sources like your relational databases and, and uh, yeah, uh, Redshift kind of uh, sources. All your data could also be in S3 bucket. And then you use group Glue Crawler to catalog the data. When you catalog the data, Actually, uh, data catalog does the classification of data. It, uh, it identifies what is the format of data, what are different columns in the data, and uh, what are data types there. So it gives you a complete uh, schema of the data present in your source uh, data. So uh, how does Glue Crawler determine uh, a catalog, a schema of the data? It uses classifier. It uses classifier to determine the schema of the source data and based on that it catalogs it. Now there are more than one classifier and uh, when Glue uses a classifier it uses one of the you can say performance index is called certainty. So it tried it can use uh, it will try to use a classifier which gives certainty of one. So suppose um, you have a CSV file and you, when the blue crawl is run, uh, it will use uh, CSV classifier because CSV classifier will give the certainty of, of one. Now, and, and then based on that, it will simply go and catalog uh, the, the, the data. Now, it might happen that some data could confuse the crawler. That hey, uh, this data can be classified by uh, can be uh, classified by this classific classifier or other classifiers. In that case, Glue will try both classifiers, but then it will use the result of the classifier, which gives the highest certainty. Okay, so keep in mind that when crawler uses a classifier, it looks for a classifier which can give uh, can give uh, the highest certainty, uh, and ideally, it looks for certainty of one to ensure that it has catalog data in the same way it is at the source system. Very simple term, classifier is a way crawler determines the schema of your source data. Now, there are many out of box classifiers, and they support CSV to your Avro, to ORK, Parquet, Zetal, Maximal. You, you talk about it. I mean, they also support your relational databases, uh, NoSQL databases. And they can look into logs and classify the logs as well. So, there are a number of out of box classifiers which uh, Glue uh, Crawler will automatically choose uh, depending on your data format. And if it could not find any classifier which can give certain certainty, uh, you know, confidence about the data, it will simply say this data is uh, unknown. Uh, it cannot determine the scheme of this data. Uh, it will simply uh, say that and come out. So uh, many times when you're trying to use this out of box classifier, you will you will realize that it is classifying your data, but it is not classifying the data in the way you want. And in that case, you have to uh, actually rely on custom classifier. Well, sometimes custom classifiers also fail because they are not super robust in my opinion at this point of time. But sometimes cluster classifier, custom classifier can fail. In that case, you have no choice but to change the format of your data using some kind of transformation. But otherwise, uh, in most of the cases, your custom classifier works. So if your autobox classifier is not able to catalog your data properly, you use custom classifier. 
Now, there are four types of custom classifier you can create. Yeah? You can create uh, XML classifier. This is used to simply classify XML uh, source documents. You can have a JSON classifier for JSON source documents, CSV classifier for CSV source documents, and you can also use Grok expression. Now, Grok expression is something I want to park for now because I need a separate session to talk about it. But today I'm going to focus on uh, three uh, three uh, classifiers, XML, JSON, and CSV. And to be honest, Grok is very powerful in the sense that you can really create very complex classification. So it needs its own, uh, it, it has its own expression, its own, you can say, language. So we need to spend some separate time to talk about the Grok, but let's focus on XML, JSON, and CSV. This will help you a lot because most of the data are in this format. So moving on. So how do you define an XML classifier? So this is the screen you use. So you when you go and try to add a uh, XML uh, custom classifier, this is the screen you find. So you have to uh, select your classification type as XML, and then you have to give the row tag. So row tag is the XML tag which you want to use as a row data. Okay. So I'm assuming that that uh, it assumes that that uh, that row uh, tag is repeating itself into the XML document, and based on that row tag, uh, whatever attributes or whatever uh, sub tags come inside that row tags, that it classifies as uh, attributes, and a row it takes as one row. So let me give you an example that probably you can understand it better. So let's see some good examples, but this could be a bad example in case of XML. So a good example is this one. So suppose uh, there is a um, a row type, no, I'm not saying that it has to be row, it can be, it can be any name and whatever name it is here, you have to type in that name over here. Uh, so this is a good example. If you see my row is this row, this row, then in that case, this attribute one and your, your entity one, entity two, uh, these two becomes column. And, and, and then this becomes a row for you. So it will classify uh, this as, uh, you can say, um, um, a table with uh, two columns, ATT1, ATT2, okay? Both is string type. Now, take another good example, like this. Where you can have a row which has got, and again, I said row doesn't mean the tag has to be row. It could be any tag name here, and, and that tag name you have to mention over here. Uh, so, if this is tag, in this case, this again will uh, create uh, two columns. There's a typo here. This, this would be ATT2, not ATT2. One, I, I, I did, did a typo here, here, but again, this will create a table. Uh, this will be a row, and these two will be two columns in the table, both string type, like in this case. This is a good example. So you can see that if some um, some tag is repeating into your XML document, that tag you can mention as a row tag, and all the attributes are sub tags under that uh, that row tag become the column of your table. Okay, that's how the XML classifier works. So what is a bad example, or not good example? So this one is not a good, good example. It looks similar to this. In fact, this is, if you try to see, it, it, it is a valid XML tag. It is a valid XML tag. But one of the requirements of using the glue classifier, XML classifier, is that you need to have an opening tag and you have a closing tag. So your opening and closing tag cannot be in the same. So that's something you have to take care of. Another example is this one. So this one has got a good opening tag and closing tag, but there is no attribute here and there is no sub tag here. So this also it cannot catalog because there is no attribute or sub tag. So it's not going to like feed this data inside as okay, this I'm going to add as one column. It's not gonna do that. It it it, it when you select a row tag, the attributes and the sub tags under that become your column, not the data itself. So this is also something you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, keep this in mind. If you take a couple of times, you realize what exactly uh, we are uh, talking about. So this is an example of our XML classifier. Now, if you talk about JSON classifier, the configuration is pretty similar to XML classifier. You have to go and select JSON as your classifier, then you have to provide the JSON path. And, and it's similar to XML, but JSON path, you could be more 
creative actually okay we have more options so let's let's run through a couple of examples and again i'm trying to use some of the examples given in the aws documentation itself so that you can go back and and get some more knowledge about it okay so let me show you some examples from there so for instance take this scenario if i try to catalog this data here you see here this is an array the top is an array uh, json document uh, start with an array if you try to do this one, it will not catalog it properly. It is going to catalog it as an array uh, with a single column, which is not going to give me much information because a lot of, so I see three, three, uh, three uh, values here, uh, names here, which, uh, which could be three columns. So how do you handle this case? So you can use a construct like this. If you say, uh, so your, your dollar represents the root. And in this case, you're saying, okay, in the root, I have an array. But I want to take every row under the array. If you yeah, star means uh, everything inside. Like uh, uh, you know, uh, use um, uh, either, uh, what do you call that? I forgot the word. Okay, leave it. Yeah, but star means uh, you're saying that yeah, I'm taking everything under the array. Now, if you try, if you if you create a JSON classifier, you put this one into JSON path, it will start classifying like this. It will say, okay, fine. So here is my root document, and I have got an array and everything inside every record under that is my path then actually it says oh so i've got one record two record three record each have got three uh, three uh, nodes so i'm going to simply add three uh, no it is my root and this is my three columns it's going to classify like that so let's take another example then it will yeah be more more interesting now take this one this one is again very complex because here i've got some some um, uh, starting a good XML document, then suddenly uh, I get this uh, this uh, uh, sub documents which has got an array inside. If I try to try to catalog it, it will really look very uh, very uh, complex. So what we do in this case is that, uh, like in this example, what they are saying is that now this this part over here, this ID over here is repeating. It's not it's not uh, shown in the picture over here, but this ID part is repeating. So one example I'm showing here is that suppose you say dollar id so what it means dollar means root and in the root if you find id as one of the node simply take this as one of the row so you're saying that all the ids this is my root and this all the ids repeating in these documents become my my column okay so it will simply catalog it like this root record string and if you try to see the value of it it will say record and you can see these these values are, are shown here this is Example that how from the root you can mention one of the one of the node to say I just want to record this node, nothing else. Okay. Now take another example, same document, but in this this time what we are saying is that that um, I am interested in uh, an uh, an identifier. Okay, I'm just in identifier. So I have a root document. Okay, I have a root document that it should have an identifiers node. An identifier will have an uh, array. And I am I am I want to take all the array 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 from within uh, all the records under the array. But in that, I'm not interested in all the fields. I'm interested in only identifier field. So if you look at this one, this is my root. Then we go to identifiers. Yeah, we go to identifiers. This is my array. All records under the array. This is all record under array. But here I've got two fields. I've got scheme, I've got identifier. But I'm not interested in scheme. I'm interested in identifier. So I simply qualify again saying I want just identifier. Okay. So not like first example where we say I want to catalog every field under the uh, under the record. Here we are saying that. I want to only catalog the identifier field under the record. So you, it will again uh, yeah, create a schema like this and, and result like this. So this is an example how uh, you can use you can use JSON path within your JSON custom classifier to be able to uh, to be able to uh, catalog the data the way you want. The last one is your CSV custom classifier, which is probably the simplest one. 
All you have to tell is that, okay, fine, this is my CSV classifier. This is how I delimit my columns. Uh, if, if your data is using some kind of single code, double code, you have to mention what your code symbol or, or there is no code symbol. And then you have to say, okay, um, how do I detect the column heading? And here you have actually three choices. You can say, I have no heading. In that case, it will automatically generate the heading for you, like call one, call two, like that. Or you say, oh, you go and detect the heading. So you say, okay, my first row is heading. You simply go and detect yourself. Or you can say, let me type in the heading here. So the third choice, you can go and say, I'm going to provide you this comma separated list of headings. Uh, so you can do that as well. So in case you get a you get a data which has got no heading, you do have a choice to actually uh, provide your uh, custom heading over here. So when you do that, yeah, CSV will essentially go parse your uh, parse your source document and will create a schema based on that. So CSV is probably one of the simplest to understand. Uh, in other two, you have to look into document structure and based on that, you have to provide either XML row tag or JSON path in order to create your classifier. So having given introduction to all these three classifiers, let's see what we are going to build here. We are going to have a XML document into S3 uh, bucket. Then we are going to use the broom crawler to crawl it. Uh, and it is it is a little complex document, not very complex, but yeah, a little complex for crawler, I can say. And then we are going to, I mean, if, if it will not able to crawl it, and then we'll go and play with custom classifiers. So we'll create two set of custom classifiers uh, just to show you different possibilities with the document. Uh, and, and, we'll, and we'll use that to catalog the data. So that's what we are going to uh, catalog the data. That's what we're going to do today in the exercise. Uh, the exercise is published to our website, awsi.com, and I have also provided URL of the exercise in the, in the description box uh, below. Now I'm going to uh, take you through the steps in the exercise and explain how it works. Uh, and again, this exercise is available to you in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the description box below. You can, you can uh, use that exercise anytime you want uh, to do this, this, uh, no, this whole uh, uh, implement this whole scenario by yourself. Uh, it provides you a step-by-step -step process to do that. So let me jump to the exercise right away. So here is our uh, exercise published to our website awsi.com. So you have to follow these steps, step one, two, three, four, to get the job done. Uh, so the first step is to have an AWS account. Uh, uh, and if you don't have, you can use this link to create one trial account. Then we are creating an IAM rule for Blue. So I'm going to run like, crawler here and in order to run the crawler you need to uh, assign a role which has permission to call other AWS services. So we're simply creating uh, a crawler here. So we simply, uh, sorry, um, a role here. So I, we go to the IAM admin console, click on the roles. I want to create a new role, a role for the blue. And now I simply give uh, power user access to just to make it very simple. But of course, in a production moment, you might want to give uh, some very specific permission to the crawler here. So we simply create the crawler and we give this crawler a nice name called Do Your Glue Crawler. Fair enough. So, uh, sorry, um, again, I'm saying crawler by mistake. We give this role a nice name called Do Your Glue Crawler. So now a role is ready. Uh, now we'll go and upload, create data into S3 buckets. So upload data into S3 buckets if you want to crawl. Uh, for that, we created a bucket called Dojo XML uh, data. And in that, we simply uh, uploaded this sample.xml file. So this is a link from where you can download this XML file. And then this file has been, um, this file has been, uh, has to be uploaded to this uh, uh, particular uh, folder. So in fact, in Adobe XML document, we created a folder called planes. And that planes, we simply uploaded this uh, sample.xml file. Now this is how the file looked like. I, I literally found this file over the internet. It's a dummy data and I downloaded it. And you can see here it shows uh, advertisements for the planes, and it talks about the uh, yeah, year, model, description, and cut location uh, kind of thing. So we will see how how cataloging works with this kind of uh, data. So it has got a few hierarchy, and uh, I think it's uh, decent enough to confuse the confuse the crawler. So what we do in this case uh, that yeah, and the data is ready. Uh, it's uploaded to the um, uh, S3 bucket. 
Now, in order to catalog data, we need to have a database uh, in Gloom. Uh, uh, so what we are going to do is that we are going to Gloom management control and say, I want to add a database. Uh, we give it a nice name, Dojo database, and we create the database. Now, time to run the crawler, because now the fun starts. So we simply go and create uh, in Glue management console a crawler. We want to add a crawler. Uh, we say Dojo crawler, crawler, um, and then we say uh, your data is stored. We simply select the uh, um, source type and say crawl all the folders. Uh, and then on the next screen, say, OK, what's your data store is? It's S3. What's your location? It is S3 Dojo XML data links. And then you click on next. It will say, hey, do you want to add another crawler, add another data source? And we say, no, I'm not interested. So which role do you want to uh, run this crawler? And we simply select this Dojo Glue role, which we created earlier. And we simply uh, create the, uh, uh, we select to run it on demand. So generally in product environment, crawlers are uh, not on demand. They are scheduled. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, we are running on demand because it's uh, exercise. We simply do, and then we'll clean up the resources. So you, uh, yeah, say I want to run it on demand. So which database you want to create a table? And you say I want to create a table inside a Dojo database. And then you simply uh, finish the finish button to uh, complete the configuration of the crawler. So once you have configured the crawler, you simply select the crawler and say I want to run the crawler. It will take a while before uh, it finishes uh, the, uh, the the crawling of the data and creating the catalog. And you can see that it finishes, and, and it says, I have added one table into the database. Now, if you go and see uh, tables into the Glue database, you do see a plain table, uh, which makes you exciting, uh, excited because yeah, there is a catalog. But the moment you open this uh, plain database, it says, hey, it could not identify the classification of it. And, and schema goes blank. Because the data was uh, it was little array type, like in JSON, I'm going back to documents again. So you can see that this has got planes, and then inside this, uh, I have got ash. Uh, and, and it is, it is mm, little array type of behavior. And you only have seen when it's array type of behavior, crawler uh, does not understand the schema of the uh, data. It, it does not know which, which which XML tag it should treat as a row. Uh, yeah, looks a little stupid, I agree, but yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> so now we have to fall back to custom crawler because uh, this custom classifier, because our out of box classifier could not determine the schema of the, uh, schema of the data. So uh, I'm sure that crawler would have used XML classifier, but even XML classifier could not determine that out of all these tags, which tag I should treat as a root tag. So it, it, it could not determine that. And that's why I said, oh, I'm not going to assume. I just come out blank. So now in this case, we'll go and create a custom classifier. So what we want to say here in the first go is that, you no, know, it's very simple. They say, hey, classifier, you see this add, add tags here, yeah? Why don't you simply uh, convert them, uh, convert them into, um, convert them into, uh, row. So each add is a row. Yeah, that's what you want to tell in the first row. So I'm going to run two classifiers here. So for that, we simply uh, go to uh, classifier. We want to add in classifier. And we simply say this external classifier on my row tag is add uh, AD. Yeah, so what I'm saying here to the classifier that this AD tag, whenever you find that, treat that as a row. So every, every, um, a sub tag or attribute you see below this will be converted into uh, attribute uh, in uh, in your uh, in your uh, catalog. So once we have created the classifier, uh, I'm adding uh, this. Uh, so we clean up the crawler. Uh, I was struggling a bit to edit and run it again. So uh, I said, okay, let's keep it simple. So first you delete this Dojo classifier, Dojo crawler, crawler, and then you create the crawler again. And this time, the only difference you do is that every, you keep everything same. The only difference you do that you say, and you go build, uh, a bit on this uh, task description security configuration classifier, this optional tag over here. And here you come all the way to the bottom and say, hey, I want to use this Dojo classifier. 
uh, you simply add that as a selected classifier. So that's the one difference you do from the previous previous crawler 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 configuration. The rest of the rest of the thing remain the same. You have to provide S3 bucket. You have to provide the S3 bucket location. You have to select the IAM role. Uh, your Dojo database. Uh, yeah, everything remains the same. And then you simply yeah, finish the configuration of your crawler and you run the crawler again. Now, when you run the crawler again, it again catalogs the data. When it catalogs the data, uh, you can see here that again, yeah, planes data has been created. But this time, voila, we have got um, we have got um, uh, a nice um, a nice table schema with columns. Now you will find it interesting that your cellar and location both have, are struct type. That means it's a complex data type. So why? Because if you go to table over data over here, uh, your location your location has got uh, these two uh, below. So it has got one uh, more label of of uh, depth, uh, and that's why uh, uh, you see that uh, this is um, uh, you this is um, a complex type of data and is defined it as, as a struct. And again, uh, seller has also got an attribute and a value itself. So that's why seller is also considered here as a complex type because it has got one more level of depth uh, below the row uh, the row tag over here. That's why these two are uh, configured as as struct. Now, if I move uh, uh, yeah uh, forward, say okay, this was good experiment, but I want to do one more experiment. So say let's go and create a new classifier, and we this time we we want to ignore everything. I just want to have this location. So this location is repeating again. Uh, and I want to say, can I really go to the second level and select that as a row? And answer is yes. So you simply, I want to simply go and select location as taxable tag. And based on that, I want to catalog my uh, my my data. So again, we go to the classifier. We say I want to add a classifier. We call it Dojo location classifier, XML classifier. Again, the row tag changes to location, not the add anymore. Again, we have to create the crawler. So we simply go first delete the plane table and this goes a crawler. Then we start creating the crawler again. But this time, the difference is that we are selecting Dojo location classifier. Okay. Earlier, we used this Dojo add classifier. This time, we're using this Dojo location classifier. And when you do that, rest of the configuration remains the same. No changes to that. And we run this crawler again. When run this time, we run this crawler, it adds the table again. And if you go and see the table, now voila, we've got very simple, only city and state, because these were two sub tags under your location tag. So you can see that when you're trying to define your uh, row uh, row tag, your row tag location need not to be your uh, at the first level or second level, it could be any level. As long as it is repeating, it will keep, uh, yeah, it will, it, will, it will consider that as uh, a record and will simply, uh, use that for the classification purpose. Now the next step is to clean up the resources so that you don't uh, uh, you don't incur any cost post this exercise. So this was uh, all guys uh, for today. Um, hope you like the exercise and if you like the video and exercise please click on the like button. Please subscribe to uh, my channel uh, for um, yeah, many such videos I publish almost uh, every three to uh, to four days. Okay, there are many other workshop and exercises which are uh, published to our website aws-dojo.com. Uh, please uh, visit our website and uh, use these exercises and, and workshops to learn about AWS services. If you have any feedback, you can uh, provide us that feedback in the comment section of the YouTube channel, or you can also provide us through this contact us tab over here. We always look forward to your feedback to improve our content, to provide new content and, and, and to incorporate other yeah, suggestions. So we look forward to that. Uh, and I promise to come back with another such video in the coming days. Uh, meanwhile, uh, stay safe and have a nice day. Bye-bye.